welcome these are horse racing selections for wednesday the 15th of november i am flat cap callum and i'm hoping you are all very very well it's the official start of the channel week uh for those of you who are new we do officially four vids a week on a tuesday wednesday thursday late night and then a saturday morning that's the usual schedule with bonus videos um, on days where I think it's particularly stand out. So four days a week. So we start on a Tuesday night. Bit of a late one tonight. Um, been doing other uh, like real life stuff. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I was a bit late on the research. So there is only three meetings for Wednesday. All or weather. All the rest of the stuff's been abandoned. So we are firmly all weathering. Which we don't mind at all because the all weather treated us well last week. So uh, we've got a bit of Newcastle, bit of Kempton, bit of Dundalk. The staking plan for Wednesday is 21.50, so it's a smidgen above um, a full day stake, um, which is, to be honest, which is to be expected because we've got three, three all-weather tracks that I like. Um, so 21.50 is the stake, and there is a Yankee at each meeting, basically. So I haven't mixed it up, so I've got one bet from each meeting, and the Newcastle one, I think it is, is a split leg one. So 12 races, 13 horses. Um that is what we've got uh, and we have got one one absolute standout biggie price i've got a hundred to one shot coming in to you for uh, for wednesday um so uh, we will see how we fare so what else we got to do on this vid got to officially review saturday uh, we had stuff in the comments for sunday not monday but we did tuesday quite a bit on tuesday um just as a flag i won't i do the tips the league review on the Wednesday night vid, so I'm not going to mention that. So we'll get to that Wednesday night vid. Um, so I've got to do the yeah, the review of those horses. Mention the golf. Got a little bit of golf uh, for this week. We'll get to that. But um, there's three outright um, in the DP World Championship. Nothing outright in the RSM. But there is a side bet in the RSM that is three six five only. So if you've not got a three six five account, you won't be able to do the side bet. Um, it is three six five only. Um, and then what else was I going to cover? Um, I mean, there's been a bunch of questions and stuff in the comments. There's lot, been lots of traffic and stuff as, as what happens when it, you know, for a good couple of days. Um, so I haven't quite got back to everything or, or got an answer for everything. So we'll see how we go. But things I was going to talk about, particularly on after I've done everything else, is um, is the racing on Tuesday. There were some really interesting results, interesting uh, market activity. Um across the meetings, particularly focused on Lingfield and Newcastle. So I'm going to talk about those as well. So those of you who like a bit more in-depth analysis of things, um, I'll be going through a few, a few bits um, there. Uh, all right, so we will start with Saturday review. Saturday review, oh, just check me on here. I haven't got my total. So we followed up Friday, which was our second best day of the year. <laughs> We get to whatever it was like middle of november finally a decent day um we backed up on saturday it wasn't anywhere near as good as friday but we did hit a win double um on a three times free across uh newcastle and chelmsford um and managed to pull out there, there were shorter rods i think uh well they were should i say i think they were um from what we the sp was shorter but 14s and 12s what the channel got um, so uh, so nice result. Um, so it was. Oh, what was that point I was going to say? Fourteen fifty on. It was only. That's all it was on Saturday because it was a revised bet. Fourteen fifty fifty six seventy three. A profit of forty two twenty three. So um, really really decent. So uh, we had this win Trixie that was an absolute toilet on it. That was garbage. Um, then this was the one that got reconfigured. I, I said when I did the video, I hope that wasn't on runner. It wasn't on runner. So reconfigured this into a Trixie. The first two went down uh, on the revised bet. There was a single on Clon Mean. So that was uh, 17 to 2, I think. But uh, so it was 10 to 1 SP. So someone had got 10s. 17 to 2 was all we recorded it for um, on the channel. Um, and then. Uh, yeah, this is what, what happened here. This was this was this, the the fourfold. Um, not quite good enough. Uh, and then that one won unseated rider placed. So 
Um, yeah, a bit unlucky in places, uh, good bits in other places, but ultimately nothing back off that. And then it's bet for, um, yeah, we, we, we've been waiting all flat season to try and land a two-legged double and then you're going it two in two days. Just sometimes variance is a, is a funny old thing. But uh, yeah, we had one smooth operator got well, well backed in. Uh, it was, I mean, it was 20 to one like the night before. 14 is what I got for the channel. 15 to two is the SP. And then we had Cuban Breeze, which was 10's SP. Did get bigger in places. So some might have got got a little bit bigger on that one. Um, so that, that, did the, that did the damage for us. So we ended last week 341 pound to the good. So after all these shoddy weeks we've had then it blows it out of the water when you get a decent week like that and that is part of the game now i don't plan to have such long droughts that isn't that isn't part of the gig it's not supposed to be that bad but um yeah ultimately the, the strategy has always been the same since i started 20 months ago i will lose on more days than i win that's what i said in the very very first video the aim is to win long term on an annualized basis uh, and in theory, that means winning more months than you lose, but there's not even a guarantee of that. Um, it's winning in, winning on an annualised basis. So expect to lose more weeks and expect to lose more days. Um, it's not for everyone. It really isn't. Like There's plenty of places. If you want to go and back, back short prices, what I'm doing is unconventional compared to what most people out there uh, putting out selections would do. I go higher prices and put them in multiples. And most people would give you short prices and put them in singles. Um, and then the terrible folk out there would give you odds on, th three odds on horses and, and say that's a good bet. Um, so yeah, that, that that's my strategy. I, I find value in the market. Uh, and I'm saying that because I'm, I'm conscious there'll be a bunch of new folk. Um, always, there's always a little spike after we've had a good couple of days. So if you are new, yeah, the, the strategy is that uh, I find value. And when I say value... Um, not specifically some of you be familiar with EV, so expected value. In some regards, I, I, I'm aware of that and I play into that, um, but not exclusively. A lot of what I do is, is perceived value, i.e. my own view of reading form, comparing form, creating the chart, what I believe the chance of the horse is, comparing it to the betting market and look for the biggest difference. Where there's a greater difference between the price I think the horse should be and the horse is, that is a greater perceived value that I have and therefore I will wager more money on the greater gap between the perceived value. Hopefully most people will get that. Some people couldn't give two whoops. They just want to know what I'm backing <laughs> for, 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 Wednesday, well, for Wednesday. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah. some people uh, don't believe in perceived value. They think that that's not, you, you know, you, 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 you can't win at that game. Um, and some people will believe that the whole horse racing game is too completely corrupt. How could you possibly win anyway? What I've demonstrated so far in 20 months is that my my ability of perceived value is winning out in the long term. Um, and despite all of the dodgy things that go on in the horse racing world and non-triers and anything else a lot worse than that, it's trying to navigate that. And sometimes you have to factor in that kind of stuff. You have to factor in the fact of when a horse is trying or not trying and there's a good example of one in the staking plan uh for wednesday so that's that all right so we are we're in a good shape it's uh, it's nice to start the week saying we're in good shape for a week i think the overall profit uh sitting at 11 and a half percent um 515 to the good for the year which is much much better than it has been um because it was, was sort of trickling down and uh, for the for the two months post Skybet era, so up until the beginning of September, it was all recorded through Skybet account. Since then, I've kind of done it in a way that's more accessible for more people, as people because not everybody's able to have a Skybet account, or some people have had theirs restricted. Um, so in the post Skybet era, about one hundred and thirty pound to the good um, in the eight weeks since I changed the stats. Uh, it's taken a while to get ourselves in profit, albeit now. Just to be super clear as well, before I go anything else, it was a really good Friday, Saturday. That doesn't suddenly mean that I'm remarkable and the week before I was terrible. It just means I variance one out in the strategy that I do um, and it was a good couple of days. That doesn't mean that this week has any right to be particularly good or particularly bad. Each day is different to the next. It does tend to follow sometimes in, in what I do that 
I do have these little hot spells of, of, of kind of picking things that may or may not be true. That may or may not be with me anymore. Uh, so this week could be a terrible week. Uh, but the point is, even if it is a terrible week, we've afforded ourselves a terrible week because we had a particularly good week last week. And technically last week, we'll say technically, we did win four days in a row. There was four profitable days. And on the Monday, if you were 365 at the right time of day in Skybet, technically we did win all five days. Some bookmakers will have paid out on those. You'd won all five days. So we did actually uh, hit uh, four, four profitable days for everyone and five for most. No, not five for most, five for some. All right. That's that. Um, comments. So Sunday I put one horse out. Uh, it was only a six runner race, uh, 14, 16 to one. Some of you uh, played it in the side market for three places, and that, that's where you would have got a return on that one. So it was third out of six, outrun its odds. Um, most people back in the main market, you wouldn't have got anything back. But um, I can't remember what somebody's talked about. Uh, pick your place on William Hill as a, as a, as a feature they use. Um, and so that a few people followed them in on that one, so that would have done you all right. And there's other bits you can do in terms of side bets. So some, some would have got something out for that. Monday, I really didn't like it. I didn't personally have a bet on anything on Monday. It wasn't my cup of tea. And then Tuesday was very, very interesting. I'm going to get to the detail of it. But as far as the tips go for what I put in the comments, we had the Glen Rovers um, was first up. Uh, very, very, very close. Got beaten a neck on the line by a fast finisher. Uh, 150 to 1. Uh, but Glen Rovers was 33, widely available um, until about 8 o'clock in the morning, I think something around there and then uh, then it got absolutely hammered and it sp about fives um so 33s into fives that clearly means <clears throat> the connections really really liked that horse um it was really clearly was primed to run a very very good race and uh, got colored collared on the line by an unsuspecting hero uh, for some so uh yeah yeah re really interesting 33s into fives now, the week before, I have to say, because this is, you know, some people think if it, if it shortens up, it has to win. I saw the complete reverse of the week because uh, my uh, my old man, he, uh, he placed a bet on a horse at five to one, um, which is probably around about the right sort of price for, for, for the horse. And it drifted to 33 to one. And at, that was second. <laughs> So 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 it can work the other way, completely the opposite way around in the market. Five to one, drifted to thirty three to one. That is so rare to see that kind of drift. You kind of think if that's drifting, then nobody's going near that one. But it was second at thirty three to one after drifting from fives. So it can go both ways. Uh, so we had that, and then uh, what was it? That, yeah, the main horse. I think the draw got it at Newcastle. I'm going to get to that afterwards um, about draw bias at Newcastle, but. Um, it wasn't on the right side of the draw um, and it wasn't a massive field and I thought that might, might be, we might be able to kind of make that up but it didn't seem to start very well so I wouldn't rule it out as, as a, I just chalk that up as a bat as a, as, a, as a run that wasn't great but I don't think the horse wasn't great necessarily I just don't think things are in its favour and then uh, then the wind tricks I mean, <laughs> three shorties all got turned over terrible uh, and all of them were less than eight runners and if you look at the results, and I'll talk more about this uh, a bit later as well, but, but two of races were won by the rank outsider and the third race was won by the second biggest priced horse in the race. Um, so goes to show you, you don't always bat the shorties in the short fields. Um, so that was those. Uh, right, let's get cracking on to um, Wednesdays and then I'll do other bits. Um, so Wednesday, Newcastle bet. Uh, we're going here. 305 uh Marcello Sai, Marcello C, uh, nine to one. And then the 337 of split leg dip, Percy Willis and Chase the Dollar, both 12 to 1. 518 as a Jamira, 17 to 2. And then um, in each of the bets there is a there is a bit of a rogue biggie, but this one it's for 550 Gio Giobu Gio Gio 33 to 1. It's coming off a long layoff, it's a 10-year-old horse. Um the only thing against it is the layoff. Um, if you actually look at the history of the horse, when it has run fresh, albeit not as long as this, it runs pretty well. Um, so it can absolutely be fit and ready. I think it's interesting to keep a horse that's been out for uh, what, like well over a year and bring it back as a 10 year old and, and try again with it. Clearly, they think that it's worth trying it. Um, you know, a lot of people would have given up on the horse. So 
I think it's an interesting, interesting horse in a race where there was nothing else strong. So I felt like it's worth chancing a Gio you, you can read it, 33-1. Uh, so we'll give that, I give it a whirl. So it's two times 10p each way, Yankees. <clears throat> so one Yankee is Marcelo Sai, Percy Willis, as a Jamira and the bottom horse. And the second one is Marcelo Sai, Chase the Dollar, as a Jamira and the bottom horse. Two separate 10p each way, Yankees. I do that when... I can't really uh, split a split a race, um, and uh, so yeah, sort of hedging your bets a little bit in that way. Fifty p each way, uh, single uh, on Giorgioba. Giorgioba, I think we're there. Fifty p each way, single on the big price, and then two fifty p win singles on the two horses in the three thirty seven, and with the other the single figure prices, we'll leave those for singles. So Percy Willis and Chase is a dollar dollar fifty p win singles. Sky are best as they are for all three bets today. Betfred's second best on this one, 365, third best. And then Betfair, Unibet, Betway, joint fourth best. 640 is the total for bet one. So that's that. Bet two is the Dundalk bet. All right, Dundalk. Um, 405, this is the horse of the day from a valley perspective. Now, you'll see me. Um, if you've been following a long time, you know every now and again I'll have a little dabble at the Luke Homer horses. So Luke Homer, um, yeah, I mean, he's, he's guy. I think the guy's a billionaire, but got into got into horse ownership and then decided to train his own horses. Um, doesn't need the money. He's clearly doing it for for fun or or for other means. Who knows? But um, if you actually look at his strike rate, it's absolutely atrocious. Um, tr- strike rate is atrocious. Horses often run terribly. Um, and every now and again they pop up, um, and then it was what was it, a couple of weeks ago we were on the right race. I think our horse was fifth, and there was two. You had two in the race, and it was second, both at really big prices. Um, so you've got to try and try and work an angle. Now he does pop up sometimes in maiden races. I think it's really really hard to see his horses that win in maidens. Very hard to pick them out. What we're going to go here with with try hard is. Its best form has definitely been at Dundalk. So it looks like it's a horse that's better at Dundalk. And some of his decent wins have been at Dundalk um, in terms of the trainer, owner trainer, um, have been there. Um, I think it's an interesting jockey booking. So Amy Jo um, Haynes is on it and she's never ridden for him before. So first time riding for him. So I think that's an interesting jockey booking. She's a decent jockey. Um, the only little niggle with her is she's never actually got her head in front at Dundalk. So her strike rate on the turf is particularly good um, for for a £7 claimer. On the all-weather at Dundalk, she's never actually won a race. But she is a regular rider of one of our fave Sunset Nova. Um, so she does know how to, to run the course. Um, so, yeah, I think there's nothing there's nothing strong in that race if I look through. There was nothing like kind of... I think the, well, I say that. I think the front two in the market um, are the right front two. Um, I think it's Mullacash Buzz, I want to say. I don't know if that's the, I think that's the right race. And something else, there's two of them at the front of the market. And I thought they should be clearly front two in the market. So if they're front two, there was nothing else really that was obvious for, for third, fourth. And I thought it's worth trying this horse. So what you've got is, it's not run anything decent on paper in terms of finishing positions, but it's now down to the basement handicap mark. It can't be, it can be rated worse. It can't run on any less weight than it's running on. So it's on the basement mark. And therefore, if they're, if they're going to try hard, this is probably the day. Otherwise, what, 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 what's the point of just keeping the horse going? So, um, yeah, it's finally down to the basement mark. And I think maybe this is the time to try it. Uh, so that's try hard. 435 Kuwait direction at 12s. 505 Gemini man 15 to 2. And finishing off uh, 540 limited, limited edition 28 to 1. 20p each way Yankee. And then the main bit here 250p each way singles. So that's try hard and limited edition. And a 40p each way double. So we managed to put it off Friday with SP of. 40s and 16s so we, we're going to try our luck on 128s so we'll 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 more than double uh what what, what we're aiming for there i mean even getting one in place we'd be quite happy wouldn't we but but yeah if we can get them both placed ace if they both win then uh yeah we might we might then well go to the bahamas uh all right then 50p win single on kuwait direction sky best 365 paddy joint best 
AAA, Betfair, Unibet, Betfred, Betway are joint fourth best. And as has been the case recently at Dundalk, if you can avoid William Hill, avoid William Hill. They are not four on all races. and These are all 14 runner handicaps at the time of making this video. Hills don't pay fourth on all of them. So make sure you, uh, you, you, you have a little shop around if you can. 770, you bet. That's bet two. Uh, bet three, Kempton. Let's whiz through this. 6.30, Granary Queen, nines. 7 o'clock, I'm, I'm trying Miss Bella Brand again. I tried it last time. Really liked it last time. Didn't run well at all. It's just too well handicapped to ignore at that kind of price. Um, it's, it's much better form over six, but it has run well enough at seven furlongs to be competitive in that race when there's nothing else really stand out it's a bit of a theme with some of these bigger ones i've got um for uh, for wednesday where i'm looking at the rest of the market and 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 thinking they're definitely primed to have something at a price get in the frame somewhere um so i'm just going to stick faith with it a little bit but it, it, it's a big price there's not a huge amount of value in it is what i would say so i think the horse's price is probably more about the 16 20 to 1 mark so it's not you know yes you can argue that's like 20 points 20 to 40 but then even if i'm saying 16 to 20 that doesn't give it a brilliant chance of framing but i think it, it, there's nothing else stronger in the race so um in terms of from a value perspective so that's what we've gone with then 730 graphite that's a really competitive race um and there's a lot of other stuff shorter that's more solid, but that, that horse is not. It's actually quite quite lightly raced for a horse of its age, um, but it's got enough Kempton form to say that the, the handicap market's on. It can run competitively from competitively from that. So I think it's worth chancing at twenties, and then finishing off from a from a kind of if I could only pick one horse at Kempton out of those four to have a bet on, that's the horse. The last one. It's 12, only twelve to one. First company, eight in the eight o'clock. But that would be my number one pick for a better Kempton. So not necessarily the biggest in between points uh, value, but in terms of when you factor in percentages, chance of it actually making the frame and winning, that would be my number one pick for Kempton first company. 20p each way Yankee, and then three times 50p each way singles on the bottom three. So ignoring Granary Queen, 50p each way singles on the bottom three. Sky Best, 365 and Paddy joint second best. And then Unibet, Bet Fred, Bet Way joint fourth best. 740 is your bet. So that's 2150. That's the plan. Uh, right, so I've done that. We've well, got to mention the golf. So last week, uh, we only had a little interest in the golf. Uh, and uh, I think we ended up with lowered a couple of shots away from placing. That was as close as he got. So no joy on that. This week's golf, I've touched on it already, but we've got three players in the DP World Tour Championship um, in Dubai. Um, there's a lot of decent golfers at the top of the market, so you, you're going to have to do well to, to get in. It's, most places are paying top five, occasionally top six, so there's, they'll... I've advised it. You'll see it's all going to be in the in the comment. Um, you've only got fifty players, so that's why you've got less um, extra places. Um, but yeah, th there's a few there that are overpriced. Uh, whether or not they're good enough um, on the, on the weekend to get into that top five, top six spot, we'll see. But there were there was definite value in there. So you've got three of those, um, and then there's a side market bet for three six five only the RSM Classic, and I say 365 only, I couldn't see another bookie that would put it on specifically. There's four golfers and a Yankee, so it's a win Yankee um, for the RSM Classic. And um, this, during the course of this evening, a couple of them have really, really drifted out, so they are massively standout prices um, compared to even if you, then, you could individually put the bet on in other places. So in the top Korean market and the top scandinavian slash top swedish market because it'd be either or um it's the same players in both um th those two um so yeah so if you've got 365 have, have a look if you've got other bookies where you can put some of the some of them on as a you know maybe as a, a tricksy or whatever then by all means have a little look there wasn't from an from an outright market there wasn't lots i was looking at there was one one golfer um the original start of the week was 66 and he would have been my one golfer but i'm not i'm not even going to mention now because the best price you can get is 40 to 1 
and I don't think there's value. It was 50s um, this morning and I was going to include it at 50s. Now we're down to 40s. It's just not worth it. And it, I'm, I'm saying that not in a kind of like, you know, oh, guess which golfer it was. You've got to have a bent, a, a basement of where you're going to say that's not value anymore. There's, you know, too many people make the mistake of they'll chase a horse down to any price. And if you did that with all my horses, you wouldn't win. I, I, you know, the point is more of my horses get shortened up than they do drift the other way. Um, and so, you know, from a golf perspective, 60, 66s was, was good. 50s was okay. 40s is probably now nearing the right sort of price. There's not much edge in it at all. I would I'd probably put put him about 33s, 35s. So the 40s is tiny, tiny edge. So I'm not, I'm not going to put it out. Um, so if you did everything on the golf, it's eight pound this week. If you only did the outright and the DP World Championship, it's three quid. But again, there is very specific bookies on some of those. I wouldn't just put them at all prices. So if I've got someone at ninety to one, and all the all you can get is sixties, it's probably not worth doing. Um, in the long, you know, doesn't change the chances of the golf for winning, but in the long term, it massively reduces your ability to have any edge on that. So hopefully that makes sense. That's the golf. Um, so I've done, what have I done? Review of everything else, review of that, review of that. Right, okay, I was gonna then, what was I gonna talk about? I was gonna talk about Tuesday racing. That was gonna, I was gonna finish off with Tuesday racing. So one thing I mentioned is about run, races, handicap races with less than eight runners. Um, I, I really should try and do some stats on it. If anyone's got, got a spare t- bit of time and they wanna start doing the stats themselves, they can. The thing, is I've got a working hypothesis that I've never tested in terms of actually like really long amount of data. But if you take every handicap that takes place that has less than eight runners, what would be the percentage of return you would get if all you did was back the rank outsider? It is an amazing amount of times you see in those sorts of races. The favourite gets turned over. Sometimes the odds on favourite is gets turned over and the rank outsider, and it happened multiple times on Tuesday, the rank outsider won. Um, and uh, yeah, it, and, it, and it happened in, in two out of three of the races I had an interest in. And you just think, from a form perspective, it just, the, the results look back to front. Um, and whether that's to do with, with differences in pace because of the small amount of field, or horses not getting the same amount of cover um, as they would do in terms of like, you know, running around corners and bends and whatnot. I, I really don't know what, what 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 it is that makes a difference, but um, there definitely seems to be, my hypothesis would be, a higher percentage chance of um, the rank outsider winning um, in those sorts of races than there absolutely should be. And I'm e- e- even curious to understand what wins more, the favourite or the rank outsider. If you actually just did it, did some stats on, on, on less than seven, less than eight runner handicap races, who wins more, the favourite or the outsider? And if it's actually fairly even, then you've got an answer there, haven't you, about what's the best thing to back yeah, back on. I do, I'm, you know, I'm not one for backing things completely blind. I do it very occasionally if there's the right thing. But yeah, so that so that, that was one thing I was going to talk about from Tuesday it was, uh, because there was quite a few races like that. Newcastle draw by. So this, we, we, I talked about this on Friday. Um, so after Friday's racing, um, it was really, really strong draw bias on Friday night in Newcastle on the straight course, on handicaps particularly, um, on so that straight course a mile or below in Newcastle. And I said about it on Saturday and it then tra- it then absolutely followed through for Saturday. It was pretty strong again. Um, and uh, it, somebody said it was mentioned on Sky Sports Racing um, about it. So I was curious to see how, we, how how Tuesday fared. If you look at Tuesday's bare results, it didn't look like it was the same. But there certainly was still more stronger than usual bias for the stand side rail, which is the high numbers. Um, and uh, I mean, Drawman was in the comments. Um, Drawman likes draw bias. Um, and you know he he backed all the forecast blind and came up with two today. So if you actually back in the outside two stalls, um, came up with two forecasts, albeit weren't big big prices. Um, and because what had been the case previously, uh, you could have picked up a couple of tricasts one Friday, one Saturday, um, just blindly back in the outside three stalls. Now 
I, I wouldn't subscribe to just doing that aimlessly because these sorts of things tend to last for a period of time. But obviously Newcastle is back again. <laughs> Literally, there's a lot of Newcastle at the moment. It's back again on Wednesday. Um, I've definitely, when I've looked at my selections, avoided anything very low, drawn very low um, on the straight course. Um, but yeah, it, it, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't uh, subscribe to backing things completely blindly like that. What I would say for anybody who's tempted to, to look at things like that, because I've obviously mentioned it, just be very wary if your betting strategy is usually Yankees lucky 15s with singles and you suddenly start doing things like betting forecast and tricast based on draw numbers and you're starting to be fair even if you don't get a result but you but you start doing that it's much more likely to flag up your betting account as as a, as as having some sort of anomaly because you it's it's coming as inconsistent betting patterns so that is not your if that's not your usual pattern of betting it's more likely to flag your account whether you win or not so I guess what I'm saying to you is if you were tempted for that sort of stuff or anything else like that that you think is a bit niche um, my suggestion if you w want to be protective of your account is that's the kind of stuff you might go to a shop for as opposed to suddenly change your betting habit on the your account um, in what you're what you're doing online so um, yeah so that's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah, that's what I'm going into on that. Um, but yeah, you, 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 you know, we've talked a lot about this. For, for those of you who start to get some level of success in what you're doing, then you need to find ways to protect your account and making your account not have um, strange uh, betting patterns is is one to do that. So uh, so don't suddenly start trying stuff. Um, and it, yeah. Is what I'm saying, um, and if because particularly if it starts going well, your account won't last very long. Um, and you know, on here, I, I'm never going to say to you back something blindly um, because if a hundred people went and did that, then that's repeat betting patterns. And as much as you know, it's repeat betting patterns. If I put out a Yankee, it will flag up a lot louder if it's m more side bet stuff that is is unusual betting activity. So that's what I was going to say about that. And then, of course, I was going to have a conversation about the fact that Lingfield, there was a 150 to 1 winner and a 125 to 1 winner. Uh, so, yeah, as you know, I'd always go back and have a look, look at the results. What would I have thought? Uh, the 150 to 1 winner wouldn't have touched it in a month of Sundays. Uh, there was really not much in there at all. I would, I would have, I'd have looked at. So that was not something I could ever have found. One hundred and twenty-five to one. Um, you definitely could look at that and go from a pedigree point of view. It's a half sibling to Sporting John. Um, really good pedigree in that regard. And if you write off the fact it it, it had a, it had a bad first run and it had a break since then, then you could have you could have taken that. You could have punted that one definitely. Um, and I would say the one hundred and fifty to one shot was probably rightly priced um it whether 150 was probably right i don't know you know 66 eight ones probably more likely but it, yeah whereas the 125 to one one i think should have been a lot shorter than that i think that should have been much more around probably about the 25 to one mark um given how many other horses in that race were kind of hadn't run and, and whatnot so yeah i think from a pricing point of view there was definitely value much more value in the second one um, but the side story I was going to say to you on that one, because the first horse beat the horse I put in the selections, uh, the Glen Rovers. And um, whether people will realise or not, what happened in the second race, where the the, uh, the big price horse won, it was a very similar situation. So I didn't put it in the comments. I, did, I was doing quite a few things and stuff today, um, but not everything was, was kind of consistent value across the board. But the horse that was second to the 125 to one shot that was an unraced horse, I was on that one. So that one had gone from 20s into, I think it was 13 to two. So there was two of them, both unraced, 33s into fives, 20s into 13 to two. So a lot of money went on both. And those two horses I had money down on and uh, specifically on those two in, in, in a double bet. <laughs> now... To be fair, you know, you don't say I wasn't spitting feathers when I got beat. I just, I just was like, 
the first one got beaten, I was like, which horse was that? Because because my horse overtook the favourite, or well, what wasn't the favourite, the Henderson horse that should have been the favourite in my view. Um, what happened there? I wouldn't pick that one. And then the second one, I was like, I haven't only gone and got done again. Then looked at the price, and I was like, okay, I've got two unraced horses that got massively backed in by connections, and I was on them at the right prices, and both of them got mugged off by a hundred plus one shot, and I was like, mad. This game is mad sometimes. Um, so so yeah, the the, the horses, the both horses that came for a lot of money, they both got turned over on the line by a fast finishing hundred to one plus shot, like. You can't write that script. And then the other bit is, I don't know if you noticed this, I read it on Racing Post um, tonight. There was, allegedly, uh, according to Racing Post, there was a a Hills punter who had both those horses in a lucky 15. Uh, I think it was, they said 20p win. Lucky, it wasn't even each way. (laughs) Just like, what, three pound bet? 20p win, lucky 15. So he had 150 to one and 125 to one. And he had an 18 to 1 winner, Celtic Heart, that beat one of my horses. So we had 150, 125 and 18 to 1 winners. And the, the other leg of his bet was second at 5 to 1. Now, A, if you're betting massive prices, why didn't you do it each way? B, 5 to 1 shot just mixed in with them other three. That seemed a bit confusing to me. Um, but yeah, he he, uh, he won 77 grand off his £3 bet. Um and uh, the, the other thing is, but yeah, if, if the other horse had won, it would have been, I worked out, 594,000. It'd be interesting to see if they paid that out. Um, but brilliant to believe that there is somebody out there that, that generally won that amount of money from a three pound bet. Because what happens is they put these articles out there to try and encourage people to go, look at what you could win and lucky 15s there. A lot of people believe lucky 15s are bad bets, but it all comes down to the value. If you're on the right value horses and you were majority of your horses have value in the prices you're backing them at better prices than the starting price or better uh, backing them at a price but the perceived value is better then lucky 15s are good if all you're doing is picking donkeys all the time then it's terrible value because it compounds the bad value the other way so a lot of bookmakers will encourage you to do those bets because for the most punters they make a lot of money um off off those sorts of bets for certain punters they absolutely hate those bets so it's it's it, 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 lucky 15s we've talked about a lot are they good are they bad it all depends on the horses and who's picking them um and then uh, overall whether they're a good or bad bet all right i think that's me that's plenty of video for you tonight and i uh, shall be back tomorrow night uh hopefully much earlier all right that's me cheerio bye bye